you were given a practice uh, worksheet um, dealing with rational functions and their graphs and uh, I wanted to help you out with a little bit of um, some of these problems uh, starting with number 25 and then I'm just going to get you started on number 26 and I want to see if you can take it to the end. So on 25 uh, we're sketching the graph and that really involves uh, first of all, identifying where we can't graph, and it also involves um, finding any x-intercepts, um, if there are any. We're going to see if this graph actually crosses the x-axis. So uh, to begin with, I'm going to factor everything I can. All right, so the numerator factors as x plus 2 times x minus 2, and the denominator factors as 3 times x minus Two. Well, right away, I notice that I have matching factors between the numerator and the denominator that can cancel. All right, and so I know now if I'm looking for an x-intercept, it's going to be um, letting the numerator, the, the part that doesn't cancel, uh, equal zero and solve, and I got x equals negative two. So I'll just label this. I know my graph is going to cross the x-axis at negative 2. Okay, now that since these factors canceled, I've taken away the need for identifying a vertical asymptote. Okay, um, and I also know that based on the fact that the numerator degree is larger than the denominator by 1, uh, I'm not going to have a horizontal asymptote. Okay, there is no horizontal, and you might be thinking, well, what about oblique, because the numerator degree is one more, but remember, something else has to be true. There cannot be any common factors uh, that can be canceled between the numerator and the denominator. Well, obviously, we have that here, so there's no oblique asymptote. Uh, we do, however, have a hole in our graph because 2 not only makes the denominator 0, but it also makes the numerator 0. And another way of identifying a hole is if you can cancel uh, factors, then just think about the number that would plug in to make that become 0. So we're going to have a hole in our graph at x equals 2. Okay, so we've gotten some good information. And now when we go to sketch the graph, we're really just going to deal with this part of the function that remains after canceling. And uh, this may not look too familiar to you, but what if we did divide by 3 <clears throat> into both of these terms in the numerator? Uh, that will turn it into something a little more familiar to us. Because this is a line. I know that because x is to the first power. And in particular, this is called slope-intercept form. So it started off looking really confusing and maybe very difficult to graph. But once we factored and canceled, we really end up with a pretty simple graph. We do, we're going to graph this line. And then after we have the line graphed, we'll plug a hole in the line where x equals 2 on the line. All right, so let's sketch the graph of y equals 1 third x plus 2 thirds, so I'm going to do y intercept 2 thirds, and then I'm going to do a slope of 1 third, so up 1, right 3, do that again, up 1, right 3, I'm going to grab my straight edge, and I will connect those, and get my line here, and I'll go the other way, Okay, and so that's pretty close to the line. Now don't forget, um, we're supposed to have a hole in the line because we cannot let x be 2. We cannot do an input of 2 into this function because that would give us denominator 0. So let's identify where x equals 2 on this particular line. So if you're not sure, <clears throat> just trace the x-axis to where you find x equals 2 and then find your line at that point and then just draw a circle and again I think I've mentioned this before I can't erase parts of a line but you could you could take your pencil and just erase that little piece 
where x equals 2 on that line. And that's your answer. That is the graph for number 25. Okay, I just want to get you started on 26. You're going to go through the same process. Uh, factor everything you can. This denominator has, to begin with, it has a GCF, so I'm going to factor out x. And then I can factor more because I have the difference between two squares. All right, and now you want to cancel whatever you can. And the only thing I see that can cancel are these x's. So I know I'm going to have a hole at x equals 0. Okay, if you just take that term that canceled and set it equal to 0 and solve, you would have x equals 0. So I'm going to have a hole there. Looks like I'm going to have two vertical asymptotes. Vertical asymptotes are numbers that cause the denominator to become 0. And there's two different numbers that do that. I'm not going to have an x-intercept because once I cancel these x's, I'm just left with a constant in the numerator. And 4, I don't ever have to worry about the constant 4 ever becoming 0, so uh, this graph will not cross the x-axis. Um, it looks like the denominator degree is larger than the numerator degree, so go back and review what that means. There is going to be a horizontal asymptote, and I want to see if you can figure out what that horizontal line would be when the denominator is bigger than the numerator degree. Uh, we don't have to worry about an oblique asymptote here. So I want you to write down all of the information, all the particulars, and draw the two vertical lines representing vertical asymptotes. And then you're just going to pick numbers. Uh, your graph is really going to be broken up into three parts. And you're going to pick numbers around these vertical lines to choose as inputs. And you want to make sure that you input into the canceled form. So instead of input, inputting into four x's, when you start doing inputs, you're only going to input into two. All right, so you're going to have a graph that's in three sections. All right, so rough sketch. Um, I'm doing more than I wanted to, but just to kind of give you a little bit of guidance, your job is to determine where's the graph on this side. Is it above the x-axis or is it below? Where is the graph in between? Is it above or below? Inputs will tell you. Is it, where is it over here? Is it above or below? And so really, uh, just a one input on the left side will be all we need. One input on the right side. You're probably going to need more than one in here to get a really good picture of what the graph is going to do in between. And then don't forget to plug your hole in uh, after you're done. So uh, talk to you through that one. I want you to see if you can come in with a finished graph. And then uh, I want you to do number 27 by yourself. And uh, I hope this is helpful, and if you have any questions, let me know.